Hi, I'm Caleb Horst for Cell Scale Biomaterials Testing. Today I'd like to give you an overview of our biaxial test system, the BioTester. The BioTester is used for, a wide, for testing a wide variety of biomaterials, such as muscle and skin and joint tissue, as well as for testing artificial materials for orthopedic and biomedical applications. Today I'm going to walk you through the entire test process using a silicone rubber material from preparing the specimen to running the test and analyzing the test data. To start with, let's look at the components of the biotester. The biotester has four actuators so that it can perform biaxial testing while keeping the specimen stationary relative to the imaging system. The system also includes a temperature controlled media bath and several specimen mounting options. A Windows based PC is used to control the system via two USB connections. I have a sheet of soft silicone rubber here, and I would like to test a small square specimen about 6 millimeters in size, which is the most common size tested by our users. I'll take the parallel razor blade jig and cut a strip in one direction. And then I'll make a cut in the other direction. to produce my specimen. Next I will dust the top surface of the specimen with graphite powder. This will help in the image analysis process after the test is complete. And now it's time to move over and set up the software for the test. I'm going to use the software to open a new test using a default template that was installed with the software. Uh, the chart that you see coming up now, that contains the test parameters. And the defaults from this template are pretty close to what I want to use for this test, but I'm just I'm going to make a few small changes. First, I'm going to change the displacement from 10% to 15% of the specimen size in both the X and Y directions. And then I'm going to add a preload, and that's that if I uh, add some kind of pre load to the specimen accidentally while I'm, I'm mounting it that the software will take care of that for me and run the test protocol from from zero stress. Third, I'm going to adjust the cycle times and the, uh, the data output parameters to be more suitable for this video. Now that the software is set up, we can move forward with mounting the specimen. The most popular way to mount some specimens with the biotester is the patented bio rakes. The bio rakes have five sharpened tines to puncture easily through the specimen and pull with over 20 newtons of force. They are available in ranges, to, uh, in, in ranges of sizes to cover specimens from 3 millimeters to 15 millimeters. The bio rakes allow for fast and easy specimen mounting for both delicate and for tough specimens. I will mention that force balance tether and clamp mounting systems are also available for the biotester and they are popular for certain applications, but I'm not going to demonstrate them in this video. I've placed the specimen on this mounting bridge so that I can slide it on top of the fluid bath. I'm going to place it on top of the fluid bath and raise it into position while looking at the computer monitor for guidance to get it centered with the bio rakes. Once it's in position, I'll use this press block to push all 20 tines through the specimen. I'll then lower this back down, remove the mounting bridge, raise the, the stage all the way up to submerge the specimen, and then place this microscope slide across the top so that I get great imaging during the test. And we're all set to go. While the test is running, the control software displays real-time images and force displacement graphing feedback. All of the images and data are being written to the hard drive for further analysis once the test is complete. Not surprisingly, the rubber I'm testing now is isotropic and somewhat viscoelastic. Now that the test is complete, I can open the output values in Excel. Here we see the columns containing force, time, displacement, and temperature at the frequency I specified in the test setup. Additional columns can be generated containing specimen thickness and gauge length for calculating stresses and strains from the force and displacement data. 
Next, I'm going to take a look at the test results in the analyze and review mode of the software. In this mode, I can play back the images for qualitative evaluation. I can better understand anomalous data by stepping through the images with a force graph overlay. And I can output movie files for presentation purposes. The most powerful feature in the analyze and review mode is the ability to measure surface strains using an intelligent, adaptive, digital image correlation based technique. In this video, I'm just going to do a quick demonstration of the image tracking software, but please see our website for a more detailed video on this subject. To start with, I will create a tracking set. I will select the first image as the source image and all of the remaining images in the stretching phase as the target images. I will then select a bounding rectangle in the middle of the specimen and I will locate a 5 by 5 point grid within this rectangle. I will use the default tracking parameters including the adaptive correlation engine and then perform the analysis. Once this is done we can play back the point movements also the point movements with the path history or we can look at the strains in either the X and Y coordinate directions or in the local principal directions. Anything we have seen here on screen can also be written to an image or video file for presentation purposes. The point locations and calculated stresses and strain values can be written to a text file for data analysis. I hope you found this video informative and useful. If you have any further questions, please contact Cellscale. Thanks for watching.